How's everybody doing? I'm wearing Hulkamania, brother. All right, let me do this. Anyway, if I wear a Bruce Lee t-shirt or a Hulkamania t-shirt or a Muhammad Ali t-shirt or a Rocky t-shirt, you know someone's going to get hurt. It's going to be spiritual Jeet Kune Do, spiritual wrestling, spiritual boxing. I'm going to take someone out. I'm going to knock someone out. I'm going to take someone's juggler out spiritually, not physically, okay? So I'm wearing Hulkamania, brother. <laughs> Hulkamania, brother. Pray. Get back in the gym. I haven't. Pray the Lord Jesus helps me to keep the weight off and to be holy and righteous and pure unto the Lord Jesus Christ to practice what I preach and save me from slander and scandals for the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So Hulkamania, brother. Let me see something. I am a real American again. Hulkamania, brother. And remember, I'm also known as Halal Hogan, brother. Ha <laughs> ha, see, I got to get density. Come on, Sammy. Do it, brother. Get back, brother. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha. Brother. Anyway. So, by the way, before we begin, Hope, do you want to share your situation so we can pray or you want to keep it private? That's up to you, brother. If you want to share your situation, circumstance, yeah, here you go, hater. Steadfast Godcast. You know, he's a pro wrestler, and he's got the championship belt in Australia. I don't know if you guys know this. Steadfast Godcast. He's from Australia, mate. He's Eastern Orthodox, right? Eastern Orthodox, and he's a pro wrestler. He actually does professional wrestling, and he's the champion for his league in Australia. Shrimp on the bobby, mate. All right. So, Hope, share your prayer concerns. If you guys don't know, Hope was the one who converted Islam, spoke to me. He left Islam and became a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's now given his life to Jesus Christ. He found a godly woman who loves the Lord. They got married. She's pregnant with their daughter. So, Hope, who's now following Jesus Christ, and he actually entered into communion with the Catholic Church, Found a godly Catholic woman. She's pregnant with their first child, a daughter. But the doctor gave them some discouraging news and even requested or recommended abortion, murdering an unborn child. May the Lord Jesus destroy abortion and avenge the death of the unborn children. So what is the situation so they can pray for your daughter? Hope. What did the doctor say, the condition of the unborn child? who is a human baby loved by Jesus Christ, so they can know how to pray for you. So <clears throat> let him share it. He's a mod, so he can comment more quickly than me. <clears throat> so here you go. My wife is pregnant. Is at 15 weeks. She had a genetic testing for our baby. Our baby will be a girl. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. <clears throat> the baby is saying out, baby may have trisomy, Trisomy 13, I don't know what that is. So the doctors, because they're evil, may the Lord Jesus teach them to fear the Lord, even suggested abortion. But we who love Jesus Christ, <clears throat> and we know that life begins at conception, because Jesus says it begins at conception, that is a human baby loved by God in the image of God. Pray for hope in his wife and their 15-week-old daughter. All right, that she comes out beautiful, healthy, filled with the Spirit, in love with Jesus Christ. All right, so pray for hope in his wife, guys, daily for the glory of the Father and the Spirit, because there are prayer warriors among you who have been gifted by the Spirit to pray for the Christians and for the salvation of the world. That's your gifting. Pray for us. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. Thank you, friends, Salma. Now, let's begin in prayer because I have to make a correction. Irata. E-R-R-A-T-A, -R -R -A -A, Irata. Hold on. So our brother Protestant, good to see you, brother. I haven't been sending text notifications on my phone that I'm going live, so don't think I'm ignoring you, Protestant believer, sir. Okay, you're my favorite heretic. Half of babies born with tris trisami, trisami, I don't know how to pronounce this word, trisami, 
13 live longer than two weeks and fewer than 10% will survive the first year of life. Approximately 13% survive until 10 years. Okay, well, that's all right. Well, let's trust the Lord for a miracle. God have mercy on these children. That will be a life that the Lord will use to be glorified. And that child will be with the Lord. So glory to the Father and Spirit. So here's his prayer request. Pray. Pray for him, his wife, and that child. Precious. The Lord creates children in the womb, and he loves his children, and he created them to know the Lord. So pray. Well, problem with my big biceps, brother, is genetically I have narrow shoulders and wide hips. So when I was a bodybuilder, I had to overdo my shoulders to get super wide shoulders and lats. But may God destroy my vanity, destroy my arrogance and my ego, and keep me humble and teachable. And the Lord Jesus, save us men from Jezebels and save our sisters from wolves. And keep us pure and practice what we preach. Because the Lord knows our weakness and we trust in him. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord purge us in the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Let's pray and pray for him until they deliver a healthy child. Let's begin. Because there's a correction I need to make. Irata. Irata is E-R-R-A-T-A. And I'm going to do Halal Hogan in a minute because I know you guys want Halal Hogan. Okay. Ready to pray? <clears throat> Name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, mm -hmm. died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we beseech and invoke you, Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, the breath of life. We come together praying for Hope's unborn child, his daughter, in the womb. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you purge us in your purifying fire. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ so that our prayers will be acceptable to God and pleasing to God as we pray for the health of this child, this baby. Because we trust you and your word. Life begins at conception. That is a human life. And to abort a human life is murder, the shedding of innocent blood. Avenge the murder of all these unborn children. We know by the grace of Jesus Christ, we believe that though they are murdered, they are alive, <clears throat> filled with life, joy and peace, perfected in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we know the Son of God takes these shattered lives and makes them whole in his presence. We believe that because God is real. The Lord is risen and you are sovereign. Avenge their blood and bless Hope's child. Grant that precious girl complete health and have mercy on all the children in the wombs, Holy Spirit. Because you give life and you take it away. And when those who take life away unjustly, they will come under your condemnation. For you are the breath of life, the Lord and giver of life, one with the Father and the Son. So please bless them, their first child, to consecrate that child for the glory of Jesus Christ. Hear the cries of the mother, because she's carrying that life in her womb. Comfort her heart, Holy Spirit, as only you can. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you purge us all, our loved ones, my daughters, and your purifying fire. Purify, wash, cleanse us all, our loved ones, my daughters, in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Feed us all. Feed our loved ones, my daughters, the flesh of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant to all of us, our loved ones, my daughters, the precious blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we need to be made whole. We need to be nourished, transformed, and perfected. And you are our teacher, our instructor, our healer, 
our life. You preserve us and transform us and empower us and protect us. So we ask, Holy Spirit, make us whole spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. And you know our weaknesses and illnesses and our temptations. Save us, us men from Jezebel's, not succumb to any sexual scandal so that no one will try to slander us and bring dishonor to discredit us, but that we walk in your power and life and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and save my sisters from wolves who will prey on them. Keep us pure. And all other sins we struggle with in common or unique to each one of us, deliver us, Holy Spirit. Food addiction. Destroy our pride, our arrogance, our ego. Destroy fake piety, fake spirituality, fake humbleness, fake humility. Destroy every form of blasphemy and idolatry and control our tongues and mouths. Own our tongues and mouths and never betray or deny our shame or blaspheme the Lord Jesus Christ. But love the Lord Jesus Christ, even if they torture us and kill us. Give us the power that you gave the prophets, the apostles, the early church to face death boldly and to be doers of the word. Please, Holy Spirit, heal me and protect me. Forgive me. Forgive us. Heal us and protect us when we succumb to confess our sins and turn away and finish the race for the glory of Jesus Christ. And save us from being puffed up. Destroy the beams in our eyes. Destroy hypocrisy from us. Give us the greatest gifts in your sight. Perfect faith in our God. Hope in our God. Perfect love for our God. And to obey his word to show we love the Lord, not for the praise of men, not to prostitute ourselves for numbers, fame, or status, but to show to ourselves that we belong to you and we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And help us to love one another by our deeds. Destroy our fear of not having enough, our lust of money and greed. And help us not to shame the Lord or grieve your heart or anger the Father. And at the same time, not to be politically correct, to muzzle dogs and crush their filthy mouths and teach them to fear the Lord, these dogs who come and try to slander us. Make me bold and never back down even unto death. Own us, Holy Spirit. Own my daughters. Own our loved ones. This is your ministry. Bless it for your glory that no man can oppose it. And the work you've begun in us, complete it till the day of Christ Jesus. And I ask Holy Spirit, the gifts you've given me for ministry, sanctify those gifts in me, perfect those gifts in me to use them lawfully to bring glory to Jesus and build up the church and no attention to myself. Purge our motives. Perfect recall of every jot, total portion of Scripture and perfect obedience. Illuminate us to plunge the depth of Scripture and feast on the meat of Scripture and beatify us with the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ and save us from vanity. Destroy my pride, my arrogance. Give me the discipline to keep on this path of strict discipline to get healthier, not be vain about it, and use my health to serve the church, to glorify Jesus, set me free from bondage to obesity and, and lust and food. And I pray that for all of us, destroy any shackle and every bondage to the flesh, to crucify our flesh, to crush Satan under our feet by the blood of Jesus Christ and overcome the world by, by faith in Jesus Christ <clears throat> and help us to be doers of the word. Strengthen my throat, my heart, my arteries, my lungs and chest with the health I need. And bless my voice to be pleasing to the ears of your servants. And help us to focus and not be distracted. And bless my neighbors that I'm not a distraction to them. They will see Jesus in me and I will lead them to Christ. That Christ will shine in us and increase in us and my daughters and our loved ones. And we will decrease. Take over, Holy Spirit. Teach those who want to slander us to fear the Lord. And destroy every idol in our lives and purge our motives. For the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We need you. We depend on you. You are the teacher, not me. For the glory of the Son, the Lord Jesus, who is in love with you and whom you are in love with. And for the glory of Abba, Father, who loves you and you love him. And we know the Father loves the Son. The Son loves the Father. The one true perfect God, the Father, his eternal Son, who became flesh and the eternal Spirit. The true God who exists. And the Bible is your voice. Enslave us to your voice in Scripture. Enslave my daughters and loved ones to your voice in scripture. For the glory of Jesus Christ, we pray. Glory to the Father, Son, Spirit. Yeah, Adam, All right, brethren, let's begin. Yeah, Adam, One correction, irata. The technical. See, man, look at that. Hulk Hogan. Look at that. I look buffed. Even though I haven't been hitting weights. Hey, how do you feel, Mikey Sliwa? No growth hormone. No steroids. And I haven't been working out consistently. It's been two weeks. And muscle memory, mines have amnesia, and I'm coming back, sir. May the Lord help me flatten my love handles that nobody loves to handle. And I get muscular, right? Muscular, and be humble about it, sir. <laughs> May the Lord make my face lean. Come on, man. I am a real Assyrian fighting for the rights of every man. 
I am a real Assyrian. Fight for your life. Fight for my life. Halal Hogan, brother. Let my voice warm up and I'll do Halal Hogan. <laughs> brother. Sam, those shirts you're wearing, that's idolatry. Images, Sam. And here you are pumping your chest. That's vanity, Sam. I don't see Jesus and you're carnal, Sam. May the Lord Jesus purge me of my flesh. And I pray that for all of us. Brother. <laughs> Brother. Yeah, brother. All right. Anyway, one correction. This is why we seek the Spirit to correct all mistakes, help us to hate sin and die to sin, and avoid errors. I had said yesterday that when Marmila said, prior to the schism, you cannot find in the writings of those Christians that the Church of the East embraces the term Mother of God. You remember that? And I said, well, I'm not sure about that because I could I could have sworn that Ephraim the Syrian, an Assyrian we call him Ephraim Suraya, who's considered a blessed saint of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Assyrian church, who wrote beautiful hymns, poetry to the triune God, glorifying, loving, honoring the triune God, and honoring the blessed virgin. I could have sworn that I had seen a statement attributed to him where he calls Mary the mother of God. Now, glory to the Lord Jesus Christ for brothers in ministry, William Albrecht, Daniel, because William Albrecht has the phone and is in contact with one of the leading scholars on Syriac Christianity, right? Sebastian Brock. Sebastian Brock, if you don't know, he's considered one of the most knowledgeable scholars on the Assyrian Church of the East, on Syriac Christianity, the Christianity of the East, those who speak Syriac, all right? And William has interviewed him, right, and brought him on a show. And so he contacted him and said, no, that statement attributed to Ephraim is a forgery. It's actually Ephraim Grecus, Ephraim Grecus. And some confused Ephraim Grecus with St. Ephraim the Syrian. So the thing is that this is what I was talking about because this prayer attributed to St. Ephraim is found on many sites. Here, I'm going to show you. Here are the links. But it's not St. Ephraim the Syrian. It's Ephraim Grecus. It's not the same Ephraim. So I want to correct myself. May the Lord help me to correct all my mistakes. But this is why you have to be careful quoting a source that you haven't verified. Why do you think I bought this book? Why do you think about this book? I wanted to make sure from academic scholarly references that what I'm being told about, let's say, Theodore, uh, Theodore is actually true. So I got the book, and it turned out the citations of Theodore were true. They were not being misquoted or misrepresented. So we need to do due diligence. If we love the Lord... We need to ask the Spirit to guide us into truth, save us from error, and do due diligence to meticulously research things to know we're quoting authentic sources. Because sadly, a lot of misattributions have occurred in church history. Are you with me there? Okay, so several websites quote this prayer and attribute it to St. Ephraim, not stating it's Ephraim Grecus. So... Here's one link. This is from CatholicDoors.com. I sent it to you. Here's another one. This is from CatholicTradition.org. Mary Glories. This too, this prayer is found there. Same prayer attributed to St. Ephraim. And I'll show you what the prayer is. So here's the other link. For those of you coming later, look in the comment sections there. Right? Here's another one. HolyRosary.com.au. This too quotes this prayer and attributed to St. Ephraim. And then let's see if this is the only one. And I'll tell you what the prayer is. Let me just first find it. What happened here? And this one too is from Jessica of that blog. It's a blog. St. Ephraim's prayer to the, mo the most holy Theotokos. So to show you what I mean, this is not St. Ephraim the Syrian. According to scholars like Sebastian Brock, right? They 
have not found an authentic statement from Saint Ephraim where he uses the phrase mother of God. He does acknowledge that she's the mother of God because Jesus is truly God in her belly. But the phrase mother of God, as far as the extent sources are concerned, they haven't been able to show he used the term because Marmila said the term Theotokos, mother of God, does not appear. The term, not the concept. The term does not appear in the writings of the church of the East. So understand what I'm saying so you don't misunderstand. The concept that Mary is the mother of God in the flesh taught by Ephraim. No one denies that. The term mother of God, Theotokos, not used. It's used in other writings. You'll find it used by other Christians. But as far as the Christians who are deemed to be blessed or saints in the Church of the East, especially those writing in Syriac, according to Medmidus, prior to the schism, you will not find them using the term mother of God. It's used by others outside of that tradition, but that doesn't mean they didn't believe it. If frame is clear, the holy Theotokos, ever virgin, all pure, was carrying God in her belly so that when she gave birth, she gave birth to God in the flesh. But he didn't use the phrase mother of God. My confusion came from this. Now I'm going to show you my confusion. What do I mean? Here's why I got confused. I'm going to show you one of the links. Because here it's attributed to Ephraim, the Syrian. And when I'm mistaken, I'll acknowledge my mistakes because we're not perfect. We're being perfected. All right. So here you go. Here it is. So you can see. So it's not Ephraim the Syrian. It's Ephraim Grecus, according to William, who got it from Sebastian Brock. So just one correction. We need to be careful and correct our mistakes because we're not perfect. We're being perfected, though I'm more perfect than the rest of you. I'm the closest thing to infallibility and the most perfect theologian and the most handsome of all of you, but I still make mistakes. So here it is. This is what I'm referring to. See the link? All right. Everyone focus. You know the rules. No side chatter. No debating. No relevant questions. Let the spirit work through me. Engage me as I engage you. So, O Maclet and Holy Pure Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Queen of the World. Attributed to St. Ephraim, but it's not Ephraim the Syrian. So, as far as the evidence is concerned, it seems that Marmilis is correct. I'm live right now in a live stream. Please don't text me. I'm live. All right, everyone with me there? So let's move on to Theodore the Cursed. We ready? I told you the more I read this book and the more nuggets I found, the more I'm going to share with you. Okay? So I read the introduction by the translator. And I found some more disturbing <clears throat> statements concerning Theodore of Mopsustia. And then we're going to go into the Trinity. I'm not going to take too long with Theodore. Pray and stay focused. Get rid of the trolls. We need to focus. As I read this book and I find nuggets, I will show you what Theodore of Mopsustia taught. And even this scholar and translator who's sympathetic to Theodore, he's sympathetic to him. He's not alienating him or demonizing him, admits that you cannot deny the dualism in his theology. What does it mean, dualism? That Theodore's statements clearly point to dual subjects in Christ, meaning two persons. So he admits it, and he's sympathetic to Theodore. He's saying, well, you can't condemn as a, or a heretic by what later Orthodox Christians said because he wasn't there at the time. When the later doctrinal formulations were developed, so you can't condemn him for what later councils or Christians said, but still, nonetheless, he says that you cannot deny that Theodore believed in dualism, meaning they're dual subjects. In other words, a scholar of saying two persons in Christ. The language is clear. He admits it, though he's sympathetic. And wants to explain that even though there are statements you can't deny that shows that Theodore taught this, which is what Nestorianism is, he was trying to be orthodox, but his formulation 
would not be precise according to later standards. Everyone with me there? Are you paying attention? I just said don't ask me irrelevant questions. Focus and let me deal with the subject. Only engage me when I ask you questions. Class has begun. Let the Spirit teach through me. So let me read. Are you ready? Oh, you found it online for free? You found it for free, and now you're sending me a link. I'm going to block you, dude. Come on. Oh, no, this is on Amazon. You see how much it costs on Amazon? 58 bucks, dude. I had to buy, and that's not counting tax. And then Kindle's 54 bucks. And then I found out Subdeacon, emphasis on sub, has a PDF of it. Do you think he sent it to me before I spent this? Man, dude. All right, anyway, are you ready for me to read the quotes? And we're going to go into Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. Are we ready? <clears throat> Let's begin. And FYI, I'm waiting for a brother to call me. Another witness from the church that Ishaya Rawaya, if you guys don't know who he is, Ishaya and Wea, Isaiah the prophet, that fake Assyrian. His name is Ishaya Rawaya. Rawaya means the drunkard. Because it rhymes, Rawaya means you're a drunkard. So Ishaya Rawaya, I hope you're listening, you slandering dog, kelp. Because another member of that church is going to call, and he's going to tell you that fake bishop who had to step down because he got humiliated is a liar like you, Ishaya Rawaya, Ishaya the drunkard. I'm going to have a field day with you dogs. You're a disgrace to the Assyrians and to the church. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Save me from these dogs who think they're Christians and expose them. <laughs> Sucks being you. Ishaya Rawaya. Right? Ishaya Rawaya. Ishaya Rawaya means drunkard, so it rhymes. You're drunk on your vomit now, you lying, slandering dog. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. May the Lord save me so I don't shame him. Now, let's read, our, shall we? Page 21, number... Roman numeral 21, shall we? Now, remember, he's sympathetic to Theodore. He's trying to paint Theodore in a positive light. So let's see what he says in 21. Page 21. Okay. Here it is. So you can see. Watch here. Page 21. You see it's underlined? Okay, let's see what he says. And then I'm going to read from pages. Roman numeral 21. 25 to 29. Translator's introduction. Okay, let's read. Quote, let's see. See, you asked for it, guys. You didn't want to leave well enough alone. Now you make me go on a heresy hunt. I'm a heresy hunter. And I want to show you this fake saint of yours, what he taught. <laughs> the catechetical homilies, which comprise... Theodore's most important extent theological work. Provide us with one of the clearest pictures of his Christology. What do you believe about Christ? Look what it says. He is a typical representative of the Anto Antiochian, Antioch, Antiochian, Antiochian school. Lord, loosen my tongue, save me from stammering. And as a result is critical of the position of Apollinarius. Upon an heiress who didn't believe Jesus had a rational human soul, but the logos animated his body on Christology. Now, in Theodore's view, the humanity assumed by God the Word, the logos, must be held fully intact, having its own capacity to operate autonomously. So the human nature that God the Word assumed must have free will. If it's truly human, it must have free will. It represents, here's the problem, it represents, as it were, a subject of its own. In other words, this is a technical way of saying that the human nature is a person on its own. Did you hear that, Assyrians? This scholar who's sympathetic to Theodore, who doesn't want to condemn him, as a heretic says, that in Theodore's theology, the human nature is a subject Subject of its own. In other words, a person of its own. That's what subject means. I'm a subject, you're a subject. 
which Theodore calls the son of God, son of David, I'm sorry. So the human subject that God, the word is soon, that human person, that human person is the son of David in correlation with the son of God, the logos. So we have the logos, the son of God, and Jesus, the son of David, and they're two subjects. In other words, two persons. See what she opened up? Amir Achmikta, Mother Daniela, Ishaya Rawaya. You had to bark, right? Now the Lord is using me to crush your mouths. We don't use LMA, sir. Laughing Muhammad's ass off. We use LMB. You didn't want to shut up. You ate honey? This conception is developed and often amplified in his commentary in the Gospel of John. Now watch how bad it's going to get. <laughs> this is just an introduction. <sighs> Page Roman numeral 25. Look at the heading. The problem of Theodore's Christology. And we're almost done. The problem of Theodore's Christology. <laughs> Ah, have some Pepsi. You want some Pepsi? Let's have Pepsi, man. How about popcorn? You want popcorn? I want some popcorn. And then we're going to go to the Holy Spirit in the, in the Old Testament. Okay. And by the way, for the record, you may not know this. Among my people, you have some bloodthirsty, murderous people. You want me to prove it to you? Sadly, we have some Assyrians who are disgraced to Christianity and the Assyrian people. Thirsty on the level of Muslims. I'll prove it to you. One of the patriarchs of the Church of the East, Mar Ishai Shumun, was murdered by an Assyrian who shot him at the door, someone that broke bread with him. That's our history. So they are bloodthirsty and there are murderers among them, but our lives are in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't take my word for it. Go to Google, the greatest scholar ever lived. I believe his name was Mar Ishai Shimon, but his name was Mar Shimon, assassinated in California by someone that he knew and broke bread with who came to the door and shot him dead. Yep, you got some crazy loons among my people who are actually more Muslim than they are Christian. May the Lord save my people from that. Not lying. Okay, see? See, Tanya knows this. So pray the Lord's mighty hand is upon me, and I'm bold even unto death. Yep, David, Malik, Ismail. Say, so what am I lying, guys? Right? This is part of our dirty history, right? When you don't play ball in politics, you got some cutthroats who want to take you out. Our lives in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, Google it. I'm not lying. It happened in 1975. That's another topic. We don't want to open it up. There you go. Thank you. See? Thank you. Fun, right? On November 6, November 1970, the patriarch was shot and killed at the door of his home in San Jose, California, by David Melek Ismail, which was a shock to the Eastern nation. It was one of his friends, too. Okay? So there you go. I'm not lying, brother. So you understand? I'm being put into situations where they're challenging me, but the Holy Spirit, may he own me and fill me will not let me be a coward and back down, and I'm putting my life on the line. I'm not kidding. I'm putting my life on the line from various groups, even my own. May the Lord Jesus fill us and protect us. Theodore of Mopsustia. So pray for me if you love me for the sake of the Lord. Okay, now let's read the problem with his theology. Some of you are shocked, huh? You didn't know that we have Assyrians who are not really Assyrians. They're actually Muslim at heart because they're wicked and vile slanders like the Muslims. May the Lord Jesus save the Assyrians and the Assyrian church from these people. For your glory, Father. For your glory, Lord Jesus. For your glory, Holy Spirit. Okay? Yeah. As you can say, Christos, I'm shaking with her. Buzdayin, I zdili. Zdili. It farkutha aturneta kaldinaya. It farkutha kaldineta aturnaya. Shamiran. Gabir kebina. Come on, come on. All right, let's read it. Ready? Look at the anama, brelegawi, 
شمیرا اکبیر کیبن کما کما مریم یا مریم اترا کمائن ہنزوم alright ready ready let's read the problem now remember he's going to try to defend Theodore Mopsustia he's a supporter of Theodore okay, so now look what he says if we exclude the hostile and biased criticism expressed in the acts of the Council of Constantinople and of the three chapters, that's the three chapters that Subdeacon Daniel and his friends been talking about. Lord willing, tune in tomorrow for I believe it's their fourth session and they're going to be talking about this, the three chapters. The three chapters is where, let me show you what the three chapters are, 73. All right. See, I need glasses, dude. Damn, I'm getting old. All right, let me see, 73. Where is 73, man? 71, 72, 73. I can't find where the three. Anyway, three chapters. He had a note somewhere, but I didn't. Let me see what to do. Anyway, that's where they were condemned. Theodore and two others were condemned. If you exclude that, which openly regard Theodore's theological arguments as anta literum examples of Nestorianism, that he's classically Nestorian. Two main critical trends, watch here. There are two schools of thought on Theodore. He's going to mention both. Two main critical trends are noticeable in the interpretation of his Christology. So he's saying, among the scholars that study Theodore, you have two camps. Are you listening? So we can finish this. It's going to take me about 10 minutes so we can go into Holy Spirit in, Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. You ready? It's this dude, dude, man. All right? You ready? There are two camps, two opinions regarding Theodore. Two camps among the scholar community on Theodore. So he's going to mention them. Two main critical trends are noticeable in the interpretation of this Christology. The first trend recognizes in a system an excessive, right here, not lying, an excessive separation between Christ human and divine natures. Did you catch that? There's a trend of scholarship that see clearly that Theodore goes to excess in dividing the human and divine nature. So you end up with two persons, basically. An excessive separation between Christ, human, and divine nature, which is due, on the one hand, to the fact, now look at him trying to be apologetic, trying to defend and excuse Theodore. That an accurate definition of the unity of Christ's natures was yes was established only after Theodore's death. Who's buying that? You see what he just said? The reason why Theodore went to the excess and exceeded the limit in that he so divided the divine human natures that he ended up with two subjects, two persons, is because the... After definition of the two natures being united in one person came after his death. Who's who's buying that? Does anyone buy that? You're telling me prior to Theodore, you can't find in the writings of the Christian lions, saints like Athanasius or others, a better articulation and formulation of the union of the natures? See why I told you this man is not antagonistic. He's not antagonistic. To Theodore, he's trying to be sympathetic and apologetic. So you can't really condemn him because the definition that was accurate and orthodox came after he died. So you're telling me there weren't Christians before him, Athanasius or whoever it was, name them, Cyril Jerusalem, who articulated and explained the union of the natures much better than him. So you end up with you don't end up with two subjects. You see, so he's a he's. Hold on, I gotta cuss this guy out live. Hold on. I gotta I wanna have to call this guy live. I'm gonna cuss him out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You know, I'm live and I told you that if you keep sending me these messages that are negative, I'm gonna block you, right? I don't know. Live. I see so. I didn't know. Okay, so now everyone's hearing you. This is why you'll always be sub. <laughs> I thought I made it clear five million times. I had no idea you were live. Hi, everybody. Now, you know I'm an equal opportunist hater, and I block people because I hate everyone. So 
give me a good reason why I shouldn't block you because you don't follow orders. Because when I tell you, stop sending me negative stuff. Are you sure you're a Syrian dude? Okay, so what we're going to do, guys, we're going to stop the presentation. Forget that we're talking about Trinity and Theodore. We're going to read all the memes he sends me because it's now two hour. Let's read Subdeacon Daniel's memes. Can I get you, like, thrown out of your church, dude, honestly? Oh, my God. Okay, buddy. I thought you were reading it, stuff. Yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. know you were on already. Because you don't care. If it's not you on my channel, you don't care if I go live. If you were subscribed, you'd what see the mean? notification bell. What do you mean? How, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, exactly. What do you mean? M-E-M-E. -E, meme. You keep sending me me. All right, buddy. I'm going live now. We're going to change the title of the session. Let's just read memes sent to me. By someone who's very sub. Okay, buddy. <laughs> pins and needles. Needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. What am I mad about? Logo. Theos, Vatos, Forever, La Primera, Lives, Mijo, Primo Miha Prima All right, let's continue. So you understand what he said? There's one camp that clearly say, sees that Theodore so separated the two that you end up with two subjects, two persons, but then he's apologetic. Well, remember, an accurate definition of the unity of Christ's nature was established only after Theodore's death. Now watch here. On the other, now the second camp, there are two camps, right? Okay, now he's going to mention the second camp. On the other, to the fact that in his polemic against the Apollinarianists, so when he's debating the Apollinarists, now look what he says to justify it. He exaggerated the separation of the two natures of Christ. Now, see, he's he's an apologist for Theodore. He likes Theodore. He's saying, keep in mind, this is what Shemash Isaiah was saying, that when he's dealing with the Apollinaris, he will exaggerate the distinction of the natures so that he will talk of the two natures in such a exaggerated fashion, you end up with two persons. Once again, let me tell you why that doesn't wash. You know why it doesn't wash? Let me tell you why it doesn't wash. How many others you know before, during, and after him that spoke in such a manner to divide Christ to such an ex extent that you have two subjects, two persons in Christ in order to save God against heresy? Why would I need to take it to that extreme? Why would I need to end up having a human person, a human subject, Jesus, Speaking of the divine subject, the divine person logos, in such a way where the human Jesus is afraid that without the logos united to him and empowering him, that he can speak rashly and that he needs the divine logos to empower him against Satan. Why would I need to speak in such a manner to safeguard against heresy? Because in doing that, I'm introducing another heresy. See the problem? Okay, now let's continue, though, what he admits. And we're going to be done with this. Therefore, according to this trend, Theodore's Christology appears to be typically Antiochene because the excessive attention to the humanity of Christ leads him to separate the Son's human nature from the divine. Do you hear it? This is one of his sympathizers. I didn't say right that. Because he's so focused on Christ's humanity, he ends up separating the humanity from what? The divine. 
R.A. Norris. I want you to remember this name because even though he's trying to defend Theodore, he admits at the end of the day, this scholar R.A. Norris is right. Pay attention, brethren. Okay, R.A. Norris has summarized Theodore's Christology with these words. Quote, here it is. Listen, brethren, please. So we can wrap it up and go into the spirit in the Old Testament. Quoting this scholar, and he's going to admit the scholar was right. Watch. It's most obvious, Mark, is its dualism. Theodore's Christology, the most obvious thing you get from his Christology is his dualism. Now, what does it mean by dualism? It means when you read the Theodore, you have two subjects, a divine subject, a human subject, meaning two persons. That's so obvious when you read Theodore. This is what the scholar is saying. Individual scholars have offered widely varying evaluations and interpretations of this phenomenon. But the fact remains for all to see. But this fact is clear. You can't deny it. What's the fact? It is manifested in Theodore's systematic development of a doctrine of two natures in Christ. It appears in his exegetical practice of dividing the sayings of assigning epithets applied to Christ or sayings of Christ. It's clear in what you read, the way he speaks to Christ, he's dualistic. He's got two subjects. No matter what you say, Theodore's writings lead you to the conclusion he's dualistic. There are two subjects. In other words, two persons, Nestorianism. Okay? And some of the sayings attributes to his human nature and others to his divine nature. And again, it reveals itself in his assertion. Here it is. This is a scholar right here underlined. See? It reveals itself in his assertion that the incarnation took place by the inhabitation of the divine son in a whole and perfect man. So Norris is saying, you can't escape the fact. When you read Theodore, it is clear, two subjects, a divine subject, human subject, he's dualistic, and he separates the natures to such an extent that you have a human subject, a human person, divine subject, divine person, and that divine subject inhabited and dwelt the human subject. That's Nestorianism. Okay. Now he mentions a second school that says, no, he wasn't being unorthodox. He wasn't really affirming Nestorianism. And he, this scholar is one of them. The scholar, right, Marco Conti, is saying, I'm sympathetic towards Theodore, and I go with the second trend, the second school of thought. He wasn't being a heretic. We need to be charitable and read him in his context. But then he still admits this. Watch here. Page Roman numeral 27. Look what he admits. Okay, let me read. However, it does not seem to me that these works completely explain and solve the problem of the evident dualism of Theodore's Christology. As much as he's trying to defend Theodore, he's like, I got to be honest. The solutions still do not solve the problem of the evident dualism of Theodore's Christology. I still believe that Norris's definition, Norris is the one I just quoted who's saying, you can't escape that Theodore is dualistic. I still believe that Norris's definition is mostly correct and faithful in describing the main character of Theodore's views on the nature of Christ and his person. The commentary on the Gospel of John, this commentary, look what he says, which is presented here in a complete English translation of the Syriac text, confirms, confirms Norris's definition in many passages. And even though it is not possible to define Theodore's Christology as unorthodox, says who? You? As Galtier and McLeod have amply demonstrated, at the same time, its dualism is undeniable. Do you understand what you just read from a sympathizer of Theodore of Mopsustia? He's admitting that the scholar, R.A. Norris, who says, you can't escape. You read Theodore's writings and commentary on John. He is dualistic. He's got two subjects, a divine subject and a human subject, meaning a divine person, human person. Can't escape it. He says he's right. 
Norris is correct. When you read the Compton John, you cannot escape the dualism, but that doesn't mean he's unorthodox. So this is coming from a sympathizer of Theodore. Sympathizer of Theodore. See it? He's trying his best. Okay. He's trying his best to explain, yeah, it's dualistic. Yeah, there are two subjects, a divine subject, human subject, meaning two persons. But he wasn't trying to be unorthodox. And you can't condemn him for the later, more accurate definition of the union of the natures. Why? Because you say so. So, Ishaya Rawaya, Amira Khmakta, Mother Daniela, this is a supporter and a defender of Theodore. And he says, you're stuck. Sucks being you guys. I'm not the wolf. This is the wolf. And the Lord saved my people from him. We got it? And I haven't even started reading the commentary. That was just the introduction. Yeah. Now we're ready for Trinity in the Old Testament. For the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. What are you going to do? Swallow your pride. Swallow your arrogance. Why the hell do you need to canonize him? What makes him special? They have to insist. A heretic is a heretic. Love Jesus Christ and his honor and glory more than your love for a man who's a maggot, a worm like us, who will face the Lord in judgment. Your allegiance is to Christ, not to him. Swallow the pride. Swallow it. And you're going to condemn me, one of your sons. This man isn't a Syrian. He's Greek. His writings were in Greek, translated in Syriac. And you're going to condemn me? For an alien who wasn't even your own ethnically? Because I'm more zealous for the glory of Jesus, for the honor of Jesus, for the unique personality of Jesus, that he's only one divine person who's God that became flesh, and my allegiance to my Lord more than to men, and you're going to condemn me. Condemn me? The hell with your condemnation. May the Lord destroy your condemnation. You're not my judge. The Lord is my judge. May the Lord strengthen me to walk worthy of him and not shame him. Condemning me for a heretic. And by the way, this is not against other ethnic groups. What I'm saying is, okay, can I understand if he's a Syrian, he's one of your own, and you don't want to throw one of your own under the bus. I can understand that. But even if he's a Syrian, he's a heretic, the hell with him. If there's an Assyrian who's a heretic, anathema sit. Him too. I don't care about nationality. When we stand before the Lord, he's not going to say, oh, you're a Syrian? Or oh, you're a Jilu? You got the highest place in heaven. See, a Syrian, you already have a high rank. But if you're Jilu, you got the highest position. You Greeks, you come second and third. You think the Lord's going to judge you on your ethnicity? Really? Okay. Let's go into the Spirit. The Spirit in the Old Testament. Spirit in the Old Testament. I'm sure they now regret they opened their mouth. You know why they regret it? They now regret because they thought I want to back down. You see what you did? You brought out the monster in me because now I bought the book. I had no intention reading his commentary. But because of Amira Khmikta, you coward. The Lord rebuke you and expose you. Mother Daniela, you coward. May Marmari excommunicate you. And Ishai at a while. See what you did? See what you did? You can thank yourselves for this because now I'm exposing Theodore from his own writings. Good job. You couldn't shut up because you're pride. And then you try to slander me that I was harassing women in the church. That's why they asked me to step down. How stupid did you feel, Ishai Rawaya, when a member of the church live said you're lying? We want him back. We're asking him to come back. We're planning to have him come back. It's a lie because that defrock Coward, who had to step down, that coward, Ochmika from Modesto Turlock, okay, Sawa, who couldn't last as a bishop, he's a liar and a slanderer. The Lord crushed his mouth and exposed him. He ran from two Assyrian churches because he couldn't last. Two, like a coward, he had to run and step down. Allah The Lord rebuke you, you coward. 
Shemli, the coward. Jabon. That's why you wouldn't face me in a debate when I called you out. Glory to the Father, so the Spirit. Now are we ready? Now are we ready, guys? Thank you. Thank you for that blessing. Spirit in the Old Testament. Let's continue where we left off. Filthy cowards. Shame I have to do this to my own Assyrian people. You cowards. Disgrace to the Lord. The Lord save us and transform us and have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, for your glory, protect me. You don't need me. I need you. As you protected your servants and filled them with the Spirit. Paul, Peter, James, John, Thomas, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Joseph, Elijah, Elijah, Isaiah, even David and his household. Lord, have mercy on me. I don't deserve it, but I love you, Lord. Though I'm a failure, I trust in you, Lord. We love you, Lord Jesus. No matter what people say of us, even if our own people disown, disown us, your own people disown you, Lord, and we're not better than you. We'll never be worthy to even lick your sandals, Lord. And in your humbleness, you became flesh for our salvation. We love you, Lord. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. May our zeal be for the you, Lord Jesus, for the glory of the Lord Jesus, not for men or tradition, Lord. And help me to practice what I preach. Let's begin. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Strengthen my throat, Holy Spirit, and make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. You didn't know what you guys did. You're going to regret it till the day the Lord summons me. You're going to regret it. Acting brave behind the computer screen. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Let's begin. Spirit in the Old Testament. I'll probably be able to finish it now. All right. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. We're going to talk about the Old Testament establishing the following. So pay attention. You must watch the previous sessions because I'm building on the previous sessions. Uh, no Q&A because when people ask me for Q&A, I'm not going to do Q&A. Because when you're anxious for Q&A, that means the more I'm going to delay Q&A. So tune in. Because you want Q&A, I'm going to do it five years from now. I'm going to do it right before the rapture. You must watch the previous sessions, re-watch them, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand perfectly what you see, hear, and read, and then share the facts perfectly. My material are yours. Upload them. Translate them. Clip them. But ask the Lord to help you understand them. Do not misinterpret what you hear, see, or read. The Lord save you from that. Teach your children, your spouses, your siblings, your neighbors, your church. It's yours, brethren. It's yours. Take it. It's free. Ask the Lord to sustain me, to be pure and holy and healthy, and sustain me for the sake of my daughters, for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. It's yours, brethren. May the Lord bless our numbers to stay steady. We don't lose people because we are losing people. Let's continue where we left off. I'm going to establish from the Old Testament the Spirit is distinct from God because he belongs to God. The Spirit is God and has the attributes of God, and the Spirit is a person. What do I mean by person? He speaks. And can be spoken to. He has awareness. He has intellect, mind, and emotions. This is what I'm going to establish. So let's continue where we left off. Don't worry, Etho. We're going to leave you behind in five years. You'll be left behind. I'll be using the legacy standard version. Because it uses the word Yahweh as a form of the divine name. Legacy standard version. All right? So let's begin. Let me remind you of some of the statements we read earlier. I'm going to show you that what the New Testament says about the Holy Spirit, the Old Testament already proclaimed it. Watch what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the things said about the Spirit in the New Testament were already there taught in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, you get a more fuller, complete understanding. Here's the proof. Watch here. Watch here. Let's let's continue. Okay. Here it is. I'm going to show it to you. So get ready. I may have to do another part, but that's okay. I'm sure you don't mind. Because the Old and New Testaments perfectly agree because the books are inspired by the same true God. And that true God is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So they won't contradict. And let me prove to you the continuity. Let's look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. So according to the Holy Spirit... According to the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives gifts. He gives gifts. The gifts you have are from the Holy Spirit. What are the gifts that the Spirit will bestow on individuals? Exodus 31, 3 to 4. Exodus 31, 3 to 4. 
Forget your New Living Translation, Anna. It's more of a paraphrase. New Living Translation is a paraphrase. It's not literal. And at times, it's going to confuse you. Okay? Anyway. But if that's the only translation that helps you understand, then stick with it until you mature. Okay. Exodus 31, 3 to 4. And I have filled him, Bazalil, with the Spirit of God and wisdom. So who gives you wisdom? The Spirit of God. Notice Spirit of God. Distinct. Spirit who belongs to God. So the Spirit gives you wisdom. In discernment, gives you discernment. In knowledge. So who gives you knowledge, wisdom, and discernment? The Holy Spirit. And he also energizes and enables you to work in all sorts of craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Okay? Craftsmanship. So if you're successful at construction, give glory to the Spirit. Because your success is from him. All right? To devise artistic designs for work in gold and silver and bronze. Are you catching it? Even being a good artist or an architect or a craftsman or a construction worker, that is from the Holy Spirit. So who gives you wisdom? The Holy Spirit. Discernment knowledge? The Holy Spirit. Okay, watch. Watch the continuity. Pay attention. Exodus 35, 31. Exodus 35, 31. We'll see if we need to do another part. What part is this? I don't even know. Part 13? We'll see. Maybe, maybe Abe will finish today. We'll see. And then I'll do other sessions and finish other sessions. Exodus 35, 31. And he has filled, God has filled Basileel with the Spirit of God. So notice Spirit of God. Of God means there are two. God and His Spirit. So they're distinct. And he's going to fill him with the Spirit from God so that he can receive wisdom from the Spirit, discernment from the Spirit, knowledge from the Spirit, and all craftsmanship. So you see the gifts of the Spirit in the Old Testament? Wisdom, knowledge, discernment, craftsmanship. All right. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. The Messianic child, when the child born from the virgin, who is God with us in the flesh, when he comes, he will operate, in union with the Holy Spirit, he always works inseparably from the Holy Spirit because this is a prophecy of Messiah. Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 2. Count the gifts of the Holy Spirit with me. Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 2. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. This is the Messiah. Jesse is the father of David. If you don't know who Jesse is, Ruth chapter 4, verse 22. 1 Samuel chapter 16, Jesse is the father of David. So this root that comes from Jesse means he comes from the physical line of Jesse through David, the Messiah. Right? Lord, bless my voice and throat. Strengthen it for your servants. I pray I'm not a distraction to my neighbors. Everyone got it? Jesse, the father of David. So this is the son of David, the son of Jesse, Messiah. A branch from his roots will bear fruit. Now, who will be with him, accompanying him, working with him? The Spirit of Yahweh. Daryl, your mother needs to repent from being a whore because she gave birth to a whore bastard like you. You are a son of the devil. You're garbage. You're filth. You're trash. I would spit on you, but my spit is better than you. And that was Sam from Purgatory cussing you out, you bastard, son of a whore. The Spirit of Yahweh will rest on him. So who's going to accompany him? Who's going to assist him? The Spirit. But now notice the Spirit. Notice the gifts, crystals. The Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit who gives wisdom. The Spirit who gives understanding. The Spirit who gives you counsel. Who counsels you and enables you to counsel others. Look at the gifts. And the Spirit of might who makes you strong, unshakable, and bold. If I'm bold, it's because of the Spirit. And he also gives you the spirit of knowledge, meaning God will give you the spirit to give you knowledge, to be knowledgeable. And it's the spirit who then will enable you to fear the Lord, honor the Lord, and worship the Lord. You caught the gifts? Fear of God, revering God, is the work of the spirit. Having knowledge of God is the work of the spirit. Being mighty in your faith, unshakable, is the work of the spirit. Having wisdom is the work of the spirit. Understanding God's will is the work of the Spirit. 
already in the Old Testament, you see that they knew the Spirit is the one who gives gifts. Now contrast this to what Paul says later. So you may think it's only New Testament. No, it was already in the Old Testament. Now watch what Paul says. Notice the continuity. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. Watch here. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 to 11. Here. Notice the continuity. Old New Testaments agree because the author is one, the Spirit, inspiring different authors with the same message. Watch here. Lord, strengthen my throat. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for that what is profitable. Let me break this down. The Holy Spirit will make known to you that you are of Him, and He'll make it known to others that you belong to Him. How? By the gifts. He will manifest the fact that you are of the Lord and that He's working through you by the gifts that others will see as evidence you are of the Holy Spirit. You understand what we're reading here? You understand what we're reading? Let me break it down. You want meat, right? Ask the Spirit to help me, to help you to understand. You understand what it's saying? Manifest. How do I make, make it clear to you, make it known to you that the Spirit is in me? By the works I do, by the gifts I, I have, and by my doctrine. So the Holy Spirit will make it evident to the body of Christ. This person belongs to the body of Christ, and I'm working through him because the gifts that he has are from me, and he's going to use it for your profit. We got it? That means it is not possible. For you to be a baptized member of the body of Christ and you don't have gifts. Impossible. You have them. Ask the Holy Spirit to confirm what those gifts are and start operating in those gifts for the glory of the Lord. And the Lord will make it known to you by the mouth of two or three spiritually mature believers. You over there? You got it? You understand what Paul is saying? Mature believers who know the Lord independently of one another will confirm, hey, man, ever thought, thought, thought about teaching? Seem gifted. Hey, ever think about singing? You seem gifted. Wow, man. Man, you're a prayer warrior. The way you pray, it's just evident the Spirit is filling you to pray. You get my point? Everyone got it? Okay. Now let's continue the gifts. Tell me if you found these gifts in the Old Testament mentioned before Paul mentioned them. What are some of the manifestations, the gifts the Spirit gives to manifest that you are of the Lord? For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Oh, Spirit of wisdom. That's already in the Old Testament. To another, uh, of the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. Oh, Spirit of wisdom and knowledge, huh? Hmm. To someone else, faith by the same Spirit. It's a Spirit that strengthens you in your faith. And to another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And to another, the working of miracles. And to another, prophecy, proclaiming, announcing. And to another, distinguishing of spirits. Now, this means discernment. Are you aware one of the gifts is discernment? The Spirit gives some people the ability to discern by what Spirit someone speaks. This man, wicked. That woman is a Jezebel. Their spirit is dirty, unclean. Their trouble. That too is a gift of the spirit. Yep, in the Old Testament, the spirit of God inspired prophets with dreams and visions and miracles. The spirit came upon Samson and with the jawbone, of an ass killed a thousand Philistines. It says the spirit came upon Gideon, upon Samson, upon Jephthah. Spirit came upon them. Yep, all throughout the Old Testament. Genesis 41, 38. Pharaoh said that in you is the spirit of God. Genesis 41, 38. 
Pharaoh said, and use the Spirit of God to be able to discern dreams. Now let's continue. To someone else, various kinds of tongues, even your ability to speak different languages. Tongues means languages. Your ability to speak languages fluently and accurately is the work of the Spirit. Did you know that? Did you know that? Do you see how amazing and glorious the Holy Spirit is and how we've underestimated him, his involvement in every sphere of life? When someone can speak five or six languages and master them and understand them, that's because the Spirit gifted that person, whether he knows it or not. That's not from him, nor is it from his false God, if he's a Hindu or Buddhist or Muslim. That is the work of the true Spirit of God, whether he recognizes or acknowledges it. Now, let me warn you, though. Let me warn you. Ask any exorcist, bona fide, credentialed exorcist, and I would go to Catholics and Orthodox, not these name it, claim it freaks. Even demons can enable someone to speak languages perfectly unknown to that person. Because remember... The, Satan is the great mimicker and usurper. He will try to mimic the gifts of the Spirit so he too can take someone and enable that person to speak a language flawlessly that that person doesn't know. In fact, exorcists will tell you one clear sign of demonic possession is if the person starts speaking in a language not possible for that person to speak because that person never... Learn that language. So then how do I know this person speaks languages by the Spirit? Their doctrine and their way of life. See, this is what's important. What do they teach and how do they live? So it's not just the gifts. The gifts must be then examined in light of what do you believe about God? Who is Jesus to you? What do you think the Spirit is? And how do you live? You with me there? So at the end of the day, it's not even the gifts. The gifts can prove you're of the Spirit, but the most important aspect is your doctrine and your living. Orthodoxy, orthopraxy. What do you believe and how do you live? Because Satan is a great usurper and mimicker. Are you learning now? I pray the Spirit is working through me to help you. Yep. Laponta, I keep missing you, brother. When you let me know you're here, you bless my heart. I have deep love for you, all of you. But Laponto, just, you know, he's a boxer and he's ready to beat up people for Jesus. So make sure you let me know you're here because I don't know if you're here for yesterday's session, two sessions. Okay, you got it now? Are you with me there? He did? Oh, wow. <whistles> wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, really? This is a fact? Wait, wait, let me see this. John Paul spoke seven languages fluently. That's the gift of tongues. Wow. That's the gift because the word tongues, don't take my word for it. Look at your Greek lexicon. Glossalia. Those of you who speak Greek. Glossalia. That means language. That's where you get the word glossary. What is a glossary? Dictionary, of, you know, terms of a language. Glossary. Look up the glossary. Glossalia. The reason why I translated tongue is because you use your tongue to speak, right? That was nasty. No wonder I'm single. Who the hell wants to see my tongue? All right. Anyway, let's go back. That's the gift of tongues. Let's finish it, the list. Okay. Another working miracle to prophecy, another to distinguish, distinguish the spirit to someone else, various kinds of tongues, and to another the translation of tongues to interpret them. But one and the same spirit, it's only one spirit. It's not different spirits giving you different gifts. It's the one sovereign spirit that works all these things, energizes you, energia. This is where you get the essence energy distinction. He's the one energizing you to do these things. And he's the one who distributes each one individually just as he wills. Now, that last part should blow your socks off. Notice the Holy Spirit has a will. The Holy Spirit has volition. The Holy Spirit 
has discernment. The Holy Spirit decides. It is according to his will what gift you get, not you. How can the Holy Spirit decide and will and make a decision if the Spirit is not a person? He decides, he chooses, it is up to him, his will, what gift you receive, not you. Now, what does it tell you about the Holy Spirit? That he's able to energize, empower billions of people with all these gifts so he can enable people to speak languages perfectly and interpret languages perfectly, do miracles, if he's not the sovereign, almighty, all aware, ever present God. You got it? See how glorious the Holy Spirit is? Now, these gifts are already known in the Old Testament. Nothing new under the sun. Are you seeing the continuity? Old and New Testaments have the same message about the Spirit. He's not a force, He is a living, eternal, divine person, inseparable from the Father and the Son. Okay, now let's go on to other examples. Let me show you the work of the Spirit. He's creator. We established that, but I'll give you more evidence. He is life giver. He is preserver. He is savior, regenerator, redeemer, disciplinarian, right? And he can punish. And he's omniscient. He's omnipresent. And he's all powerful. All of this from the Old Testament. I'm not going to use New Testament. Only went to cross-reference. Are you ready? Is the Holy Spirit omniscient and omnipresent? Old Testament, guys, not using New Testament. Watch here. Legacy stand because it uses the word Yahweh. And I've already done series on this. If you go on my YouTube channel, put in Holy Spirit. It's already there, but I decided to revisit this topic. Is the Holy Spirit of God all-knowing, incomprehensible, omniscient, and omnipresent? Yep. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 15. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 15. Pay attention. Isaiah 40, verses 13 and 14. You ready, guys? Let's read. I hope you're being blessed, Crystals, because you said you were excited for this, to see your Trinity in the Old Testament. Now, guys, if the Trinity is the Old Testament, you're going to tell me it's not in the New Testament? you got to be of the devil and blind. If I'm proving the Trinity in the Old Testament, you're going to dare say it's not in the New Testament? If anything... It's got to be in the New Testament. If it's in the Old Testament, how much more in the New Testament? Anyway, Isaiah 40, 13 and 14. Now, understand the language. Who has encompassed the Spirit of Yahweh? In other words, who can contain, fathom the Spirit of Yahweh? Can the Holy Spirit be contained in your brain? Can you fully fathom in your mind? No. Or as his counselor has informed him. Who teaches the Spirit of Yahweh? Now notice the distinction again. Spirit of Yahweh. Spirit of Yahweh. So there are two, Yahweh and the Spirit. With whom did he, the Spirit, take counsel? And who gave him understanding? Can anyone instruct the Spirit? Help him to understand and counsel him? No. Why? How do you instruct and counsel an omniscient divine person? But that shows you he's a person. Because only persons can instruct and be instructed. Right? And who taught him in the path of justice and taught him knowledge and made him know the way of understanding? No one can. Why? Why can't anyone teach the Spirit, guide the Spirit, instruct the Spirit? How do you instruct someone who's infinitely wise with an infinite mind who knows everything already? How? You get it? It's not just mirroring, merely shedding light. It's much more than that. Everyone with me there? Do you understand what we just read? Isaiah 40, 13 and 14. Can you in your right mind encompass, contain the spirit? Impossible. Do you really think you can instruct him, teach him, guide him, and counsel him? How? He's an infinite mind. He knows everything. So this affirms the omniscience of the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, now what about his omnipresence? Old Testament, huh? Omnipresence. And we're going to show you he's a person who speaks and can be spoken to and has emotions. Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12. Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12. Psalm 139, verses 7 to 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Nowhere. Wherever I go, your spirit's already there. Or where can I flee from your presence, your face? Nowhere. Wherever you go, God is there. Notice, God and his spirit, no matter where you go, they're there already. Your spirit and your face. You and your spirit oversee everything. Observe everything. Preserve everything. The entire creation is before you and your spirit. Wherever you go, you're aware. If I sent to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, you are there. Now, re remember what this means. Sheol means the underworld. Are you aware your Bible teaches that even hell to come and Sheol, Hades, are present before God? That God is overseeing Sheol, Hades, and hell and sustaining Sheol, Hades, and hell so that even in hell, he'll be there overseeing hell and sustaining hell because he's already in Hades, overseeing Hades and preserving it. You're in heaven, but you're also in Sheol. You're there. Now watch what he says. If I lift up the wings of the dawn, if I try to fly, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there, your hand, because God is not physical, hand means your power. Even there, it's your power that's guiding me. Because God is all-powerful over creation, so every part of creation is under his power. Otherwise, it would not exist. <clears throat> and your right hand will lay hold of me. If I say, surely the darkness will bruise me, and the light around me will be night. The darkness will hide me from you. Pitch dark, you won't see. Look what he says. Even the darkness is not too dark for you, and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are alike to you. He sees just as clearly in the night as he does in the day. But wait, who is this referring to? Yahweh the Father or Yahweh and his spirit? Where can I go from your spirit? Got it? Yahweh and his spirit. You got it? Yahweh and his spirit. Crystal, that's your son? I didn't know that. Now that part about you're in Sheol. You guys should know this if you've been following me. How many of you are aware that even in the lake of fire, hell, God will be present in hell, overseeing hell, that he'll be there present? How many of you know this? How many of you don't know this? Put a two if you don't know this. Put a two if you don't know, so I can show you that. And it only makes sense. Put a two if you don't know this. Any twos? Oh, okay, we got some twos. All right. Yeah, also hell, not just Hades show. Here it is. You think I'm lying? Fam, you're a heretic, fam. Your hair always thick, you little heretic, fam. You're a heretic, fam. Your hair be ticking, boy. Here it is. You think I'm lying, right? <laughs> Relation 14, verses 9 to 11. Relation 14, verses 9 to 11. You ready? Sam, your hair be ticking, you heretic. <laughs> la, la, la. Here you go. Relation 14, verses 9 to 11. <clears throat> la, 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 la. Wow, are you kidding me? Guys, another miraculous confirmation. You see how real our God is and how beautiful God is, crystals? Antonio and crystals, that's mother and son. And without me knowing, I confirmed a miracle he experienced today. You see how real God is? 
how beautiful God is, how amazing our God is. And not only a miracle confirmed to her and her son, but to me. You know how it it's a blessing to me? It shows me, in spite of my failures and attacks, the Lord is using me to glorify Jesus and build this church. So thank you and bless you for sharing that. You're going to make me cry now. <laughs> you Okay, here. Okay, let me call him. Here. Real quickly, another witness. Your God is real. Hello? Hi, Sam. Okay, brother. Don't mention your name, location. You're live now. Now, I just want people to hear. Now, here's another member of that church where that bishop who stepped down said he stopped me because I asked women. Now, brother, you'll be the second witness. Did I harass women in the church? No, absolutely not. Say louder. No, absolutely not. So he was lying, right? Sorry again? He was lying, right? Yes, 100%. 100%. Now, is it true that the church still wants me back because they miss me and want me to teach? We would love to have you back. And they are waiting to have you as soon as possible. Okay. And you're a member of that church, right? Yes. Okay, I love you, brother. Almost every day. Almost every day for prayer. So thank you, brother. Another witness, a brother, that person is no longer bishop, a liar, a dog, a tool of the devil, nachipwa. But God bless you, brother. I appreciate you. Sam, also, also ask, like, where did you get, like, this information from? Because, like, this guy is not known, like, by us. Nobody knows him. Yeah, he's going online Facebook and saying it, and people are hearing it, and now they're trying to use me to, to use it to discredit me. So, but you confirmed. Anyway, thank you, brother. He's a liar, we know. But thank you, Aziz. God bless you, brother. Okay, brother. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Very good. Second witness from that church, Ishai Arawaya. Ishai Arawaya, you dirty, filthy slanderer. Second witness from the church, I didn't harass any woman, and they want me back, and they're now trying to try to bring me back. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. So there you got two witnesses from that church. Okay, now one more time, the miracle. We just witnessed a miracle. So let's rejoice. Let's take a moment to rejoice and glorify our Lord. Unbeknownst to me, unbeknownst to me, I guess her son had an encounter today. And God right now in the live stream confirmed her son encountered the Holy Spirit miraculously. And he's in tears and she's about to cry. You see how real our God is, how beautiful our God is, how majestic our God is, how much he's in love with us, that he will confirm he's real and that he's with us because he'll give us these little miracles. As a reminder, I'm with you. It's not only a blessing to her and her son. May the Lord bless your household. The Lord is now speaking to me because, brethren, I'm weak. I have low self-esteem. I struggle with sin. I struggle with trying to fight the good fight. I'm lonely. No wife, no kids. My kids are not with me. So at times the Lord gives me these nuggets to speak to me. Sam, you are in my hand. I love you. I will not let you go. I will work through you and I'll preserve you because that's my prayer. Lord, please do not let me fail you. So you blessed me by telling us the story. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. You see that? And brethren, I'm weak. My strength and the Holy Spirit has saved me that I never fall into sin and shame the Lord. And I'm lonely. I don't have my daughters. Christmas is coming. My daughters will be celebrating Christmas with another man, an adulterer, married to their mother. Another Christmas by myself, struggling, not having them. If I had them, I was full and content. But the Lord Jesus is my strength and may he sustain me. Thank the Lord for that miracle. Thank the Lord for that miracle. I'm rejoicing for you, Crystals, and your son. May the Lord bless your family because you blessed me because the Lord is working through me to confirm the miracle. That means he's using me. May I remain humble and filled with the spirit of the Lord. Glory to God. Another praise report. Amen.
Pray for me, brethren, I'm weak. The Lord knows my weakness may save me from lust and food addiction. Pray for me. I know. I may feel lonely, but I'm never alone. All right, now, glory to God for that. Now, does the Lord Jesus sustain hell and is he present in hell? Sooner than later, Kian. Sooner than later. I miss my angels. I miss kissing them, putting them to sleep, and I miss waking up in the morning with them, running to me, waking me up. Bah, bah. I miss their hugs and their kisses. And now another man is in that home. They wake up seeing another filthy, wicked man, scum, adulterer, with their mother, not their Baba. May the Lord preserve me. May they come sooner than later before I lose these years. They're growing up without me. <clears throat> son of God, you are the son of David. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on me. Ya yimmi. Matwarim Qaddishta, Adra, Holy Mother. <clears throat> I'm an orphan without you. Please pray for me and my daughters. Ask your beloved son who loves you to bring them to me. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. <clears throat> Revelation 14, 9 to 11. Revelation 14, 9 to 11. <clears throat> then another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead, purifies Holy Spirit, purge our motives for the glory of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And he also will drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Here it is, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his rage. And he'll be tormented with fire and brimstone. In whose presence? In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Did you guys catch it? Who is present? Let me show it to you again. Who is present? The Lamb's presence is there. The Lamb's presence is there. And he also will drink of the wine of the wrath which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his rage, and he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So it only makes sense. Hell cannot exist if God doesn't sustain it. Nothing in creation could exist if God is not personally sustaining that part of creation. So Everything in creation has to be preserved, sustained by God. Well, if God is sustaining every part of creation, that means every part of creation is before him and he's aware of it. That would include hell. You with me there? So is that making sense? And the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest. You blew me away, crystals, you and your son. Lord, glory to the Father. You blew my mind away. They have no rest day and night. Those who worship the beast and his image and receives the mark of his name. There you go. So we established. So you learn about the Holy Spirit, right? Okay. So he's omnipresent, omniscient. He's ever present, all aware, creator, life giver, sustainer. So let's go into that. He's a person who speaks, who instructs, who teaches, who disciplines because he's God. He is the third person of the Trinity. So Catholics, you got it right. Orthodox, you got it right. Assyrian Church, you got it right. Our only debate is how the two natures unite in Christ. That's our debate. That's it. You know that, right? As far as the Trinity, we all got it right. As far as God, Jesus being God in flesh, God as man, God in man, the God man, God in flesh, we all agree. Where our debate is, how the natures relate. But you got it right. You got it right. You've had the truth all along. You have it right.
Anyway, let's go into more examples of the Holy Spirit. And then I'm going to probably have to do a part 14 because we have about 25 more minutes. Try to keep it in two hours. And then, yeah, we'll go on to other topics if you're praying for me. Pray for me. The Lord doesn't need me, but it's an honor. And I mean this. It is an honor and a joy. The Lord worked through me to see you in love with Jesus, blown away by Jesus, in awe of Jesus, in spite of my weakness. And I'm weak, brethren. May the Lord save me from Jezebel's and my lust and food addiction. I am not strong. I'm letting you know without the Holy Spirit, I will fail. That's why I cry to Spirit, please save me for your glory. Right? People have tried to tempt me, but may the Spirit spare me. Glory to the Father, Son, Spirit. Better men of God and me have fallen. So I'm not arrogant in that area. Please, Lord. Anyway, let's talk about the Holy Spirit again. Let me show you. The Holy Spirit speaks, instructs, inspires, teaches, and he does so for the prophets. Watch here. Ready? Let's line them up. Let me line up these passages. Did the prophets know that the Holy Spirit was teaching them? Did the prophets know the Holy Spirit was speaking through them, inspiring them? Did they know that in the Old Testament before the New Testament said so? You better believe it. Where are you getting this from, fam? Fam, where are you getting this from? You lie, fam. You lie, boy. You lie. You lie. Okay, here, let me show. Let me line up the verses. Okay, watch here. Let me, I got to line them up. There are too many, so I got to line them up for you, and then we'll see if we have some time. All right. Here you go. Sam, you are there, boy. You be lying, Sam. You lie, Sam. We ready? 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. Okay? I don't lie, baby. I multiply, okay? I don't lie. I multiply. Okay? 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. David, a thousand years before the Lord, what did he say? Now these are the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, declares. Now watch here. Watch here. Look what he says. The man who was raised on high declares, the anointed of the God of Jacob and the sweet psalmist of Israel. Look what he says. The spirit of of Yahweh spoke by me. Say what? A thousand years before the Lord showed up, David is telling you, it's the Spirit of God who's speaking by me. So you're telling me David knows the Holy Spirit speaks? The Holy Spirit speaks? He knew that? And he knew the Spirit belonged to Yahweh? And the Spirit is one speaking to me and through me? And his word is on my tongue? So David knew it's the Spirit's word that I'm speaking and writing. He knew that. But here's where you should get blown away. David, when the Spirit speaks, who's actually speaking? Watch this. When the Spirit speaks, who's actually speaking, David? Watch here. The Spirit of Yahweh spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. The God of Israel said, Damn, Jehovah Witness, the rock of Israel spoke to me. David just said, the Spirit of God is the God of Israel, the rock of Israel, who speaks and inspires me, showing the Spirit is not an active force. Damn. Yep, exactly, Kadeh Sun. And the archive clipped it. Oh, by the way, I got to read a, remind me, Kadeh Sun, to read a testimony from the archive. He sent me some more. This is Old Testament, dude. A thousand years before Christ. And David's saying the Holy Spirit is speaker. He speaks. He instructs. He tells me what to say. And when he speaks, I listen because he's the God of Israel, the Rock of Israel. Damn, the Holy Spirit you're telling me is the God of Israel. What? Damn. Everyone got it? Now, is he the only one who said this? Well, let's see. Nehemiah. Nehemiah, who instructed the people of God and whom did he use? Nehemiah, Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 20. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, chapter 9, verse 20. Amen, Orthos, when the Holy Spirit save us all. Nehemiah is praying to God and he says, you gave your good spirit. Do you see the distinction? 
They're not the same, are they? You, your spirit. You, your spirit. That's two. But God, you gave them your spirit to give them insight. So who gave insight to Israel? Who instructed Israel? God's spirit. How can he give you insight and instruct you if he's a force? Oh, your manna you did not withhold from their mouth. And you gave them water for their thirst. That's Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 20. Now notice verse 30. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 30. Watch here. Okay, watch here. Amen, Mark. However, you bore with them for many years. You put up with Israel and their rebellion for too many years. Now watch. And testify to them by your spirit, by the hand of your prophets. Did you catch it, guys? They know the prophets spoke by the spirit of God speaking through them. God sent the spirit and told the spirit, tell the prophets to say this. Spirit of God comes and says to the prophet, speak what I'm about to reveal through your mouth. They knew this already in the Old Testament? Oh, I thought you can't show the new, the Trinity in the Old Testament, William Lane Craig. According to William Lane Craig and Jamal Muhammad White, you can't show the Trinity in the Old Testament. What drugs are you on, guys? Yet they would not give ear. Even the Holy Spirit sent by God told the prophets to tell the people to repent, they would not repent. So what did God do in punishment? You gave them into the hand of the peoples of the lands. Everyone getting this? Now, I've done series on this. Well, hold on. What about Zechariah 7, 12? Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Testament, sir. It's all about the testament. The thry, Old Testament, New Testament. Even Trent Horn denies that? Damn, man, you broke my heart. Trent Horn goes against the teaching of the Catholic Church, the tradition of the Catholic Church, that you can't show the Trinity in the Old Testament? Damn, Catholic answers. You need me to come and clean house. Give me some of the money you make, dude. You guys bring in millions. Anyway, Zechariah 7.12. Watch here. Zechariah 7.12. And they made their hearts diamond hard. They became stiff-necked and hard against you. They would not listen to you. Your people not listen to you. So that they could not hear the law and the words. They could not hear the law of Moses act upon it or the words. Now watch. Which Yahweh of hosts had sent by who? By his spirit, by the hand of the former prophets. Did you catch it? How did God reveal the law to them and the words to them? By the spirit through the hands of the prophets. So God sent the spirit to then raise up prophets, to then instruct the prophets and have the prophets speak and write God's words. And they wouldn't listen to the words of the spirit that he gave through the prophets. So what did God do? Therefore, great wrath came from Yahweh of hosts. Is this mind-blowing to you guys? Are you seeing how clear God and his spirit appear in the Old Testament? God and his spirit, they're distinct. And how clear that the spirit speaks instructs, inspires, empowers, transforms, creates, gives life. He's all-knowing, present everywhere. Don't let him deceive you. See, another confirmation. Only yesterday I started about the stop of the Spirit, and today now some of the Spirit is answering me through you. Do you see another confirmation, guys? Talk about how miraculous our God is. Have you noticed the miracles we're experiencing on the channel? Now, I've been told... That to be canonized as a saint, you have to do miracles. So that means after I die, if the Lord tarries, you guys are going to have to find all these snippets of miracles so that I can be canonized as a saint. And then you can have a feast day in my honor. Now, can you imagine in the other church and their anathemas? So imagine the Catholic Church canonizes me. And then the Oriental Orthodox say, anathema Theodore. Anathema Nestorius. Anathema Hassan Sam Shimon. What? How dare you, dude? Don't you know I'm a saint? And don't worry about it. My doppelganger, Sam, who's in purgatory. When I get there, I'll pray you out of purgatory if you're nice. Shut up, you fat, bald, handsome. Oh, yeah? Stay there. Damn you. All right. Another confirmation, huh? I was confused by the Spirit, and today 
You're answering me about the Spirit. See how you see how much the Holy Spirit loves us, is in love with us. You see, we are blessed. How much the Holy Spirit loves you, that He saw your cry and He brought you the answer, just like He did with the Ethiopian eunuch when he was reading Isaiah, didn't know, and the Holy Spirit told Philip, "Go and tell him about Jesus." Acts 8, 26, 39. The Spirit is real and almighty, and may He seal us. What false is here? Amen. Now, Butch is going to be at my right hand and Timmy at my left in heaven when we're there praying for you. Come on, Butch, pray for him. Do I have to? Yes, stupid, you're in heaven. You're perfect now. Okay, Micah 3 8. Micah 3 verse 8. Micah 3 verse 8. Watch here the pattern. Micah 3 verse 8. This is the prophet. On the other hand, I am filled with power with the spirit of Yahweh. Did you guys catch it? Is it clear that all the prophets, all the prophets are aware that the Holy Spirit was speaking to them and through them and inspiring them to say and write the words of God? They knew it. You see how fully aware they are? They know it. They all knew it. You see? Even the pagans knew it because the pagans like Pharaoh would say to Joseph, the spirit of God is in you. Right? Ask your priest that question, how will do it? He'll answer it. With the spirit of Yahweh. So notice what the spirit of God does. He's the one who emboldens you. He's the one who empowers you to speak without fear or backlash and repercussion and to empower you to call out people for their sin and to proclaim righteousness and condemn them for living unjustly. See, I'm filled with power by the Holy Spirit of Yahweh and he's filling me to be righteous and just and mighty so I can boldly declare to Israel their sin and not be afraid of the backlash. See? See that? See that? All right, hold on. Who inspired Ezekiel? Who empowered Ezekiel to see visions of God and hear God audibly? Ezekiel 2, verses 1 to 2. Ezekiel 2, verses 1 to 2. Watch here. Ezekiel 2, <clears throat> verses 1 to 2. Then he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, then I speak to you. That was Jesus appearing to him, by the way. If you read Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 2, that's Jesus appearing. In a visible form as a man, <clears throat> as the glory of Yahweh. <clears throat> See my voice. Lord Jesus, strengthen my voice. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> See, Satan trying to attack. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. And as he spoke to me, watch, the Spirit entered me and caused me to stand on my feet. Are you making the connection? It is only by the Spirit enabling, empowering you. That you can see God and hear God. So the Spirit came upon me, energized me, and empowered me to look at my God and hear from Him. All right? And I heard Him speaking to me. Now watch. This is Ezekiel, so he knows it too, right? Ezekiel 3.24. Ezekiel 3.24. We're going to go out with a bang in a minute. Ezekiel 3, 24, and I'm going to do a part 14. Ezekiel 3, 24. The Spirit then entered me. Again, notice he's saying, I need the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Spirit then entered me <clears throat> and caused me to stand on my feet. So who empowers you? Who enables you? To see your God and hear hear from your God and act upon the word of your God, the Holy Spirit. You see how important he is for our life? Without him, we're nothing. Acknowledge him more and more. And then God said to him, go shut yourself up in your house. So the Spirit is telling him, lock yourself in the house. Here's another one. Hold on. Ezekiel 11 verse 5. And here's where I'm going to blow you away. Ezekiel 11 verse 5. Watch here. A few more references, and I'm going to end it with a bang. <clears throat> Ezekiel 11, verse 5. 
Oh, my throat. Anyway, Ezekiel, <clears throat> let me drink some water. Yeah, I'm Shiva. 11 verse 5. Then the spirit of Yahweh fell upon me. And he said to me, say, thus says Yahweh. So wait, who's talking to him? The Holy Spirit. Who's telling him what to say? The Holy Spirit. No, he's fully represented in the Old Testament, Kiki. Stop with these questions. You're going to get out of here. So who's telling, who's telling Ezekiel what to say? The Holy Spirit. You see it? The Spirit came upon me, and he, the Spirit said, Say, thus says Yahweh, so you say, house of Israel, for I know what comes up in your spirit, meaning in your inner person, what you're thinking. Is it clear, crystals and everyone else? The Spirit is telling him what to say. Ezekiel, say, this is what Yahweh says. You catching it? This is reminiscent of what Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do. In John 16, 12 to 13, now look at the connection. Okay? Watch here. Look at the connection. Watch here. And we'll do a part 14. I think we'll be done. Okay? So the Holy Spirit sent by God to tell <clears throat> the prophets what to say. Say this. Now, does the New Testament agree? Here you go. John 16. John 16, verses 12 to 13. John 16, 12 to 13. Let me get some water. Tell me if the New Testament agrees with the Old Testament. Tell me. Read it. Jesus speaking. John 16, 12 to 13. <clears throat> Lord, rebuke the evil one. Watch here. <clears throat> I still have many more things to say to you. What marginal? The Holy Spirit is all over the Bible. Virtually on every page of the Bible. He's not marginal. I still have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak from himself but whatever he hears he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come just like in the old testament the spirit is sent to tell you what the father and the son tell him to say spirit comes to ezekiel ezekiel say thus say says yahweh host Perfect continuity, because Jesus said, when the Father and I send the Spirit from the Father, He will tell you what He hears from us. So the Father and Son say, Holy Spirit, tell Peter, James, John the following. See the miraculous continuity? Okay, a few more references, and then we're going to go out with a bang, because now you're going to see that Jesus is God. You're going to see... Jesus is God. Okay. Let me show you a few more references. I may have to use the New King James. Oh, it's all right. Did even the pagans know that these men spoke by the Spirit? Here. What did Sparrow, Pharaoh, Sparrow. Let me use New King James Version. What did Pharaoh say to Joseph? Watch your New King James Version. I have to, I have to switch because this captures it perfectly. Pharaoh, who inspires Joseph to know dreams and the interpretation? Genesis 41, 38. Yep, the Holy Spirit is so almighty. Do you have to look like Pamela Anderson's sister? Come on, man. Lord bless you, preserve your family, and fill you with the Spirit and fill us with the Spirit. Why do you have to look like Pamela Anderson and be a godly sister? Darn it, man. I hope this was Photoshopped. Anyway, Genesis 41, 38. Yep, he is amazing. Genesis 41, 38. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? Even the pagans knew it was the God of the Hebrews who sent his Spirit to enable his servants to do things 
that the pagans couldn't do. See it? You caught it? That's Pharaoh talking about Joseph. He's telling his court, can we find someone like him who has the spirit of God in him, who enables him to know dreams and interpret them? Something that even we can't do? Because God can silence the demons from inspiring false prophets if he wants to, to shame them. That Genesis 48, 30, 41, 38. And who comes upon you and empowers you to be bold in the battle? Judges 6, 34. There's going to be more in part 14. That ain't You ain't lying, sister. Pamela Anderson is unregenerate. She doesn't know the Lord. May she come say, you know the Lord. You love the Lord. You are a princess, a daughter of God, who will reign with Jesus. May the Lord empower you and all of us to love Jesus. And you know the scriptures. So your beauty is not just physical, it's spiritual. Complete package. All right, anyway. But try to work on the humbleness a little bit. <laughs> Just kidding. But no, seriously. Just kidding. Anyway, Judges 6, 34. Judges 6, 34. You ready? Judges 6, 34. But the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Who empowered Gideon and made Gideon a bold warrior in the battlefield? The Spirit. Who empowered Samson to kill a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass? The spirit. You understand what this means? Even your ability to fight physically, even your ability to win physical battles, even your ability <clears throat> to be a physical warrior is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right here. I'm not lying. And then one final example, and then we're going to go out with a bang. Belshazzar says to <clears throat> Daniel <clears throat> the following. But before that, if you read Daniel 5, the Babylonians are conquered by the Persians. On the night that the Babylonians are conquered, Belshazzar and his court are blaspheming the God of Israel by taking the utensils of the temple that was taken from Mm -hmm. Jerusalem, and they're having a drunken orgy, okay? Daniel 5 says, they see a hand appear. They see a hand appear visibly, writing on the wall, mini, mini, tekel, parson, and they're freaking out. Read Daniel 5. They're freaking out. Now, the magicians, the soothsayers, right? The Chaldeans, yeah, it says Chaldeans, didn't know what it meant. So they're all freaking out, and they tell Belshazzar, there is a man among us. He's from the tribe of Judah. That's Daniel. And in the days of your father, Nebuchadnezzar, he was able to miraculously interpret dreams from him that none of us knew or could interpret. Call him. Now look what they say about him. Look what they say about him. Daniel 5, 11. Watch here. This is how God shows the gods of the nations are nothing they're demons, and they're beneath his feet. Watch here, Daniel 5, 11. We're almost done, Pierre, another five minutes, God willing. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. You catch it? The spirit of the holy God is in him, Belshazzar. And in the days of your father, light meaning illumination and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. His knowledge was like our gods were found in him. He's amazing because the spirit of the holy God, his God is in him, empowering him with wisdom that puts us to shame. That's what they're saying. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father, the king, made him chief of the magicians, astro astrologers, and Chaldeans. 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 Chaldeniah, and soothsayers. Even the pagans saw how glorious, beautiful, almighty the spirit of the true God was and is. They realized, man, the God of the Jews, his wisdom, and the way he inspires 
His servants by the Spirit puts us to shame. It's mind-blowing what the Spirit of this God is able to do. So then what does Belshazzar say to him in Daniel 5, 14? And get ready for me to go out with a bang, because here's where you're going to get blown away. And we're going to do one final session. Daniel 5, 14. So Belshazzar calls Daniel. Look what he says to him. Even pagans are bearing witness to how glorious, majestic, beautiful, incomparable God and his Holy Spirit are. I have heard of you, Daniel, that the Spirit of God is in you. Beware of translation of the Spirit of the gods. And that light and understanding, excellent wisdom are found in you. So did you see who gives you wisdom, understanding, illumination, these gifts? The Holy Spirit of God. Where do we learn this? In the Old Testament. Now, whose spirit was it, according to the Old Testament, that spoke to the prophets, told the prophets what to say? The Spirit of Yahweh, right? One more time. Because now, get ready to go out with a bang. We're done. Watch here. Who spoke through the prophets? Who taught the prophets what to say? The Spirit of Yahweh. But here's where you're going to see Jesus is God. You ready? Zechariah 7.12. Zechariah 7.12. Zechariah 7.12. Watch here. And they made their hearts diamond hard so that they could. Zechariah 7.12, not 13. It's not Friday 13, buddy. And they made their hearts diamond hard so that they could not hear the law and the words which Yahweh host did what? Had sent by his spirit, by the hand of the former prophets, therefore great wrath came. So whose spirit inspired the prophets? The spirit of Yahweh, who's the Holy Spirit. And here, what David says, 2 Samuel 23, 2. Watch here, because now you're going to see the Trinity is irrefutable. The Bible is Trinitarian from beginning to end. Yep, that's the Nicene Creed. They're getting it from Scripture. 2 Samuel 23, verse 2. 2 Samuel 23, verse 2. The Spirit of Yahweh spoke by me. Whose Spirit told David what to say and how to say it and empowered him to speak God's words and write them down? The Spirit of Yahweh. Now, here's where you're going to pass out from shock. 1 Peter 1, 10 to 12. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 to 12. Watch here. Lights out. Lights out, anti-Trinitarian. Booyah shaka. Concerning this salvation, concerning this gospel that we're preaching, Peter's saying, this gospel of salvation we're preaching to you, nothing new. Because it was prophesied in the Old Testament. The prophets... Before us, in their writings, prophesied of this grace that would come to you. The favor that God would come in the flesh to save you. They already spoke about it. And we witnessed the fulfillment. And they were carefully searching and inquiring, Lord, all right, when is this going to happen? Can we be there when it happens? Will it be in my time? Inquiring to know what time, what kind of, what time or what kind of time. Now watch here. The Old Testament prophets were inspired by who? Who told the Old Testament prophets that Jesus would come in the flesh to save? Watch here. This is Peter, a Jew. Inquiring to know what time or what kind of time the Spirit of Christ within them. Oh my goodness, Peter, what did you just do? Peter, you're a Jew. Yes. Yes. You know the Old Testament, yes. You know the prophets were inspired, instructed by the Spirit of Yahweh. 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 Here's this whore, son of a whore, whose mother is a whore, because she, she prostituted herself with the Shia because his mother is a whore, and he's a whore like his mother. Lord, crush your mouth, you filthy scum bastard. I wish I could see you face to face. Anyway, 
Why is, and that was my doppelganger in Hades. Dude, even when they canonize me as a saint, there's none I can do for you. You're going to be the first one in this purgatory to be thrown in hell. Shut up. Make it easy for me to get you out of purgatory. All right. The Old Testament prophet said, Yahweh sent his spirit to teach the prophets. So it's the spirit of Yahweh. <clears throat> Peter the Jew said, Peter the Jew said, it was the spirit of Jesus Christ in them. The prophets had the Holy Spirit sent by Jesus, the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who came in them <clears throat> and spoke through them that Jesus would come to suffer and die. Within them was indicating as he was predicting the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. Do you understand what Peter just did? Peter told you that Yahweh, whose spirit inspired the prophets to see the future and record it, was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in his pre-human existence. Because the spirit of Yahweh is the spirit of Jesus because the Holy Spirit belongs to Jesus because Jesus is Yahweh, but he's not the Father. And how do we know the spirit of Christ is the Holy Spirit? Because of verse 12, and we're done. Verse 12. It was revealed to them, the spirit of Jesus, revealed to the Old Testament prophets, that they were not serving themselves. They were serving you by announcing the coming of Christ. And now he's come where I witnesses to him and we're announcing the fulfillment. That they were not serving themselves. But you in these things which now have been declared to you, we are now declaring to you the fulfillment of their prophecies because he came, we saw him, we touched him, we hugged him. He died and rose again and we saw him ascend. Through those who proclaim the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit. So you see the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Christ is the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Things into which angels long to look. You got it? What did you learn? The spirit is not Jesus Christ. He's a spirit who belongs to Christ, sent by Christ. The spirit is distinct from Yahweh. He belongs to Yahweh. And yet the spirit is also Yahweh because he's also God. And he's a person who teaches, instructs, speaks, corrects, disciplines, who's all-powerful, all-knowing, present everywhere, who creates and gives life. And the spirit of Yahweh is the spirit of Christ. Because Christ is also Yahweh in flesh. But he's not the spirit and he's not the father. That's why we're Trinitarians. Lord willing, we will finish it in part 14. Trinity in the Old Testament, specifically the spirit. Lord willing, maybe tomorrow. But Lord willing, tomorrow around 3 p.m. New York time, Michigan time, Eastern Standard time. Daniel and crew will be back to talk about Oriental Orthodoxy. Lord willing. So pray for my health, pray for my daughters, pray God bring them to me, pray the Lord grant all of us miraculous physical safety, security, protection, health, keep the weight off, stay healthy and be fit, that the Lord empower us, my daughters and I, to love Jesus and be holy and protect us, to never shame the Lord, and for provision, for ministry, and the Lord bring them to me. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Final thing, there was a guy named Taekwondo here. Taekwondo, are you here? Taekwondo, are you here? Okay, JT, I'll do Tony Montana because I'm a clown who sticks around in your town so I can amuse you, JT, because I'm your clown in your town. That's why you stick around because I'm just a squirrel in your world. All right. Now, oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. Taekwondo. Okay, before you go. Now, before you guys go, don't, don't, don't go anywhere because I want to show you. I try to post articles, rebuttals, or videos from myself and others on my community post. So let me show you this before you go. Now, 
Taekwondo, what degree are you? I'm going to let you guys in on a secret. Not too many people know this. So if you tell people, I'm going to have to find you and kill you. What degree are you in Taekwondo? If you go to my community section, I posted a series of articles on a variety of topics. And I'll try to do that daily, Lord willing, because I have over 2,000 articles. Study them. Learn them. Everyone with me there? Shut up. Are you, you paying attention? You shut up, you bald-headed freak, even though you're handsome. You bald-headed freak. Why are you speaking? Shut your pie hole, mister. Okay. Questions. Shut up, man. Damn. Okay, what's his degree? Are you a black belt, white belt? What are you, orange belt? Shut your pie hole, man. Damn. Okay, here, let me show you. Go to my community section. So I told you, there's two of me, one in Hades and the one, other one here. Community section, you're going to find this. Here it is, community section. And you'll find this post 17 hours ago. Did he say what degree he was? And so I share a slew of articles. I say, I post some older articles. Rebuttals on a variety of topics, I does the spirit know all things? Did Elijah, Enoch ascend to heaven? Why did Jesus curse a fig tree? Ever wonder why he cursed a fig tree? All right. Now I'm going to share some with you, buddy. I have an article on that. Why did Jesus curse the fig tree? Right? So these are some of my older articles. Some might think he has changed. But I give you one. See? One. I'm not going to show you all. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine articles among the th nearly 3,000. So daily I'll try to share these links. Study them, learn them, and pass them on and teach. Share with your neighbor for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. Now, this man says he's eighth-degree black belt. All right. I'm a grandmaster in one system, and I'm a 10th degree black belt in another system. Okay, guys, please don't tell anyone, because after this, I'm going to have to now delete the session, because I don't want my enemies to know. I'm a grandmaster in one system, and a 10th degree black belt in another system. So, I'm a grandmaster at take your dough. I'm the only grandmaster in the system, take your dough. But I'm a 10th degree black belt in take one to go so i have a 10th degree black belt in take one to go and i'm a grandmaster in take your dough please don't tell anyone because i will have to hurt you and i'm also black 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 sash in snot foo snot foo what is snot foo i am able to kill people with my snots my snots are deadly one snot from my nostril, and you will never recover. So I'm a black sla uh, black sash in snot foo, 10th degree black belt, and take one to go, and a grandmaster and take your dough. Now, can I leave you with a true story? Talking about snot foo. Nina, okay, get off the horse, sister, please. Sister, we know Pamela Anderson got nothing on you, but such a merciful, compassionate on us beggars. Get off the horse, Nina. <laughs> Got your mercy. True story. I was with a bunch of Greek guys in Whistler's restaurant. This is when I was coming into the faith. There were some Bosnian girls that were debating us. True story. I've shared this in the past. Give me two minutes to make end it with a true story how all my life I've humiliated myself. All my life I've disgraced myself. I've been the laughing stock of everyone. Like we say in Assyrian, we at Maschara, Kelbo Khmara. We at Maschara, Kelbo Khmara. You at Maschara, at Kelbo Khmara. You are the laughing stock of dogs and asses. But in Assyrian, it reminds, it, it rhymes in Assyria. In Assyrian, my tongue. You at Maschara, Kelbit Ukhmara. Anyway, so she was getting me upset. And I remember watching a documentary on martial arts called Warrior Within. Two minutes, guys. Warrior Within. Documenting the martial arts in the 70s. There was a guy named Ron Taganashi from New York. He was a high-ranking black belt in his system. He's since passed away. Ron Taganashi. 
And they have him sitting in darkness with candles. And he had buck tooth, you know, tooth like this. Right? Find it, warrior within. I'm not lying. So he's sitting there in dark and he's going, I'm not kidding. It's in warrior within. So I'm in the restaurant. The Bosnian girl is sitting here. She's debating. So I start going, uh, now they don't know what's going on. They're like thinking I'm nuts. So they're sitting. My buddy Pete is next to me, Pete, the Greek guy. So I'm going, uh, and all of a sudden I go, she jumps out of fear. Ah! But when I did that from the force of doing that, right? A snot shot out of my nose. From the pressure, a used snot came out of my nostril. And I didn't think anyone saw it. Pete saw it. And I'm looking, where did it go? Where the hell? I'm embarrassed now. Oh, my goodness. Where the hell did that snot go? And I'm like, damn, I can't find it. Is it on my clothes? Pete is laughing because he saw it. And all of a sudden, he looks, and the snot is on that Bosnian's girl's left shoulder, a huge snot on her shirt. And he goes, ew, the snot. Ah! That's the story of my life. Black sash and snot foo. I've been the laughing stock of dogs and asses all my life. Like they say in Assyrian, Nasha Shuhara, Yaw Muscharit Kelbo Khmara. Nasha Shuhara, Yaw Muscharit Kelbo Khmara. Okay, brother, that's it for now. <laughs> what you gonna do, man? When Halal Hogan runs wild all over you, brother. I am a real Assyrian. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, have mercy. Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit, have mercy. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will return physically and bodily because he lives and he's almighty. Amen, Lord Jesus. In your infinite power, seal us, my daughters, loved ones, by your spirit to love you, Lord Jesus. Save us from scandal to never shame you. Arise in us, Lord. Thank you. Maranathe. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Lord willing, see you tomorrow. Ha ha ha! What you gonna do, brother? What you gonna do, Mika? Bricha? Ha 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 ha! What you gonna do, brother? Ha ha Hogan! La 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 la! Muhammad Rasulat Khmara! Ha 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 ha!